Well, good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> I'm not going to uh, take much time today. I don't think there's anything I could teach y'all that you haven't already heard. This is just a testimony of what God has done in North Carolina in the sister conference of my brother. Let us pray. Father in heaven, speak now and uh, inspire us. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. So when I got out of Oakwood, I was installed in my first church in Murfreesboro, North Carolina. Population 5,000, one street light, uh, nothing 24 hour. Uh, but it was there and, you know, I felt like they just kind of dropped me uh, in, the, in the middle of the wilderness and nobody told me what I was supposed to do. But I knew that I got to leave it better than I found it. And so um, that was my installation Sabbath. And you could see the church was very dark. I felt like it was a funeral home. Um, and so, you know, it was, it was a dark, dark church. So we decided to do an upfit to the sanctuary. Um, that was before. Um, if you see, there was, we put some sheetrock on there afterwards. And, uh, you know, we, we decided to brighten it up, but... Uh, the carpet was red, the upholstery was green, there was no, you know, pillows and all that kind of stuff on the wooden benches. I said, man, we got to do better than this. And so we did a uh, total upfit. This was my office before and after. Um, that was the, that's the sanctuary. You see it brightened up really good. And then we decided to do new carpet. <laughs> we decided to do new carpet, and this is the after. And that was the finished product. And that was my first church. When I got there, we had about 30 people coming on Sabbath. Man, when I left there, there was over 80 people coming on a good day. Um, and so it was a blessing. And so my conference called me. They said, Kelly, we need to move you. And... Uh, by now, I had developed a reputation as an evangelist and as a church grower and as, you know, custom pews. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, and so they said, where do you want to go? And so I told them I want to go to uh, Charlotte. I'm, I like to try my hand in a bigger city. Um, and so they sent me to a church, Trinity Worship Center, that was at the time 10 years old, worshiping in a school, Kennedy Middle School. And uh, the church was, you know, plateauing. It was really declining, but plateauing. Um, and so it took a lot of prayers, blood, sweat, tears. And so this time the president and the administration gave me a directive. They said, we want you to grow the church and get them into a building. And so that was my duty um, I got installed on January 14th, 2017, and, you know, we started to do evangelism, and we started to outgrow the school, and, uh, you know, we just was baptizing almost every month we had baptism. We were always in the community and uh, doing Bible studies and et cetera, as you heard, um, and it was important for us to... You know, you can see in the background that we were outgrowing the auditorium. And one Sabbath we were in there, there was a basketball game, a funeral repass, and us having church in the school at the same time. And you could hear the buzzard from the game. You could hear the whistle and all of that. And I told the church, listen, we got to go. And so we decided to move out after 12 years. We moved out of Kennedy Middle School. And we started to rent this facility um, in Southwest Charlotte, and then the pandemic came. We started renting here in September of 2019, and the pandemic came, and we, um, I'm glad that we moved out before the pandemic because we couldn't remain in the school um, during the pandemic. CMS uh, decided to close the school down for everybody, and my church despises Zoom. 
And so I don't know if my church would have survived if we um, didn't move out. And in, um, in 2019, in 2020, we developed such a good relationship with the church that I sat down with the pastor and I told him, you know, I know you don't plan on selling, but if, if ever you plan on selling, uh, please give us first right refusal. And God is so good that, you know, that church unfortunately closed down and they sold it to us uh, for $3.2 million. And we, uh, we just closed last May. We had our grand opening and that's, uh, you know, state of the art, everything, we got everything in it. Um, and so that was very good. Uh, we had our Breath of Life revival there last summer. Uh, this year we have Dr. Ron Smith coming to be with us. And so that's just a little testimony of what the Lord has done. Greetings to your boy, Pastor Daniel Kelly Jr. You know, I've been reflecting about the almost six years that I've been privileged to be the lead pastor of the Trinity Worship Center Seventh-day Adventist Church here in South Charlotte. And we recently acquired property. I want you to see just how good God has been. He's opened doors for us. When I got to this church almost six years ago, January 2017, I remember coming and I saw the faces of folk who were down and a little bit discouraged, discontented, and just apprehensive of the future. Uh, but together, we labored, we prayed, we fasted, we've given and given and given some more. And after 15 years of going from facility to facility and after 15 years of growing and changing and after 15 years of searching and hoping the Lord saw it fit to bless us with a beautiful, I'm talking about an exquisitely, absolutely beautiful piece of property here in South Charlotte. It has been an honor. And I pray that our paths continue to cross for many years to come. Uh, but it has thus far been an honor to serve the saints here at Trinity Worship Center. It has been a privilege to be a part of the team that has been responsible for finally, after 15 years, acquiring a property that we could call our own. It took blood, sweat, tears, and fears. But look at that, y'all. You know what that says? Trinity Worship Center, where love means to serve. Let's go inside and see the blessings of the Lord. Listen, y'all, I got the keys. <laughs> I got the keys. And what a wonderful thing the Lord has done. State-of-the-art facility is certainly a game changer for uh, Charlotte, for South Atlantic, really for Adventism, um, for this property to have been uh, purchased. It is, it is, it is very progressive. It fits the goals of Trinity. Of course, we need more space because our church is growing. But it is, it is a beautiful facility that caters to our right now needs. We've got classrooms. We've got all these paintings and uh, all this wonderful space for our young people and our children. We got just, uh, it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal gift of God for such a time as this. Now, many of you do not come back here, but this is the control room. Uh, this is the brainchild of Jeff Phipps and uh, Patrick Jones and Lenny Alberry and, and all the others, Myron Stewart, 
who have decided this summer that we need an operations room so that we're putting our best production out. And the team has been working so hard back here. And I pray that you continue to give towards our audiovisual. This is just a tip of the iceberg of what we plan on doing for audiovisual um, here at Trinity Worship Center. We have our big, uh, we call it our conference room here. And uh, oh, what the Lord has done for Trinity Worship Center. Isn't that awesome? It is amazing. It is amazing. Before COVID, you know, we've been worshiping here since 2019. So, you know, the grand opening is just for the record. Uh, but we've been here. We went from renters, now we're owners. Look at this. I'm talking about state of the art. Sanctuary is a blessing. It is a gift of God. It is my honor to celebrate, to congratulate, to applaud and appreciate Trinity Worship Center on this, our grand opening. We thank God for the wonderful things he has done. We thank God for the wonderful things he will continue to do. State of the art kitchen, y'all. Commercial kitchen. We just thank God for being so good. And we close by considering the two acres of land that we have. Two acres of property. And we pray that soon and very soon, the Lord will bless us to expand our operations here at Trinity Worship Center. Soon and very soon, we'll have the opportunity maybe to build a sanctuary or something over here um, where we can enlarge our territory, where people can come. All right, so that's the gist of it. You got, uh, you know, the church is very dark, so we have some light uh, fixtures that we just voted on Sunday that we're going to do. Um, that's uh, recording artist Melvin Crispo who came to celebrate with us. Thank you for uh, hearing and uh, just thank God for what he's done.